It's time for Agriculture, presented by Tricana Farms in Germantown, New York, a small-scale producer of heritage breed livestock and a wide array of vegetables and berries on just over 39 acres. They also produce a full array of garden vegetables, many of them heirloom varieties raised naturally, as well as an assortment of berries, including raspberries, blackberries, gooseberries, black, red, and white currants, mulberries, and elderberries. And now, here's Mark Scherzer. It's the little things that get you. The pebble in your shoe, the thorn under your fingernail, the sentence in that document you missed on first reading that changes the meaning of everything. On those nights when I awake and sleeplessly review in my mind the long list of things I should have but have not done, it's often the smallest, least consequential ones that loom largest. I know they're inconsequential because in the morning when I think back, my reaction is, why would I bother? But when the spirits of the night take charge, those little unfulfilled responsibilities represent just how overwhelming things seem. If I can't get even those little things done, is not the boat of my life in danger of sinking? It seems fitting then, that as I have increasingly been concerned about incursions of wildlife on the farm, it's the smallest of creatures that have preoccupied me the most. The uninvited but now pervasive tick. Farms are fundamentally about humans cultivating and promoting some forms of life, be it livestock, crops, or beneficial insects, and trying to exclude others, such as wildlife, invasive weeds, and harmful insects. We try to erect barriers between the good and the bad with fences, nets, and ground cloths, and sometimes with other forms of life, like guard dogs and plants that repel insects. The Canada geese who were nesting on the island in my pond, who persistently chased off a fox hunting for food for her young, were a repeller species. Since the geese successfully hatched their six goslings and moved on, I've seen the fox kits playing on the wood chip pile just outside my back fence, while the vixen herself has been wandering inside the fence line. I now fear for my chickens a little more. To be sure, I also fear potential incursions of other large animals. A few weeks ago, Eric, while walking Lily in the cemetery, encountered what he believes was a wolf. Later that same day, driving about 15 miles east of here, a young black bear crossed the road in front of us. If such wildlife are increasingly prevalent in the region and decreasingly afraid of interactions with humans, surely it will not be long before such invaders are seeking food on the farm. But the ticks are here already. For my first 19 years here, I had little interaction with them. While my late partner, Peter, endured several tick bites and at least two bouts with Lyme disease, I never, to my knowledge, suffered a single bite. The last two years has been a different story entirely. I repeatedly find ticks on my body, often well entrenched in the process of biting me and sucking my blood, and are painful to pull off. How could I have gone so long without a bite and then suddenly seem to get one every few weeks? My friend Steve is convinced that a regional tick population explosion explains my newly bite-prone existence. I have tended instead to attribute it to age-related changes in my body chemistry that must be attracting the ticks more strongly now. I have no evidence for this theory, says Steve. Is there anything you're not desperate to blame yourself for? But maybe it's part of the spirit of the time that I still find it a plausible explanation. We've discussed this a lot of late because Steve is convinced that tick-borne disease is about to explode as our next public health crisis. Steve was bitten on one of his recent visits here, which led him to start the usual recommended short course of prophylactic doxycycline. He also sent his tick in to a nonprofit organization called Tick Report on the web at tickreport.com, the motto of which is, a piece of data is peace of mind. For $100, they sent him back overnight a beautiful picture of his tick and a combined DNA-RNA report for various pathogens. For 50 bucks, you can get the DNA report alone. Steve's tick, like most, almost half of all ticks captured in New York State, was positive for Lyme disease, and it led Steve's doctor to extend his antibiotic treatment. When I recently got my fifth tick bite of 2021 on my thigh, I was pretty sure that the tick hadn't gotten its mouth under my skin for very long, or not long enough to transmit disease. I was too embarrassed to email my doctor for a prescription two weeks after the last one, so I just pulled the tick off, put it in a Ziploc bag, and sent it off to the free testing facility at the Thangamani Lab at Upstate Medical University in Syracuse. 
You can find them at that's N-Y-T-I-C-K-S dot org. I did not get back a pretty picture, but within a week I did get back the happy result that my I. scapularis female tick was negative for disease-causing pathogens. My results came with the disclaimer that this tick testing program is meant only for academic research purposes and should not be considered as a diagnostic tool or as a basis on which to make healthcare decisions. It would be nice, I thought, if you could get these results fast enough to make treatment decisions and in a manner easy and cheap enough to be used by the entire population. It might even help avoid unnecessary use of antibiotics, which we know is a great public health concern of itself, as it enables development of antibiotic-resistant bacteria. Even more effective for public health would be to reduce the number of bites and the number of biting ticks that carry disease. All my friends are offering various techniques like tuck your pants in your socks, spray your clothing. My friend George, having attended a seminar on tick-borne disease at the Cary Institute for Ecosystem Studies, that's at CaryInstitute.org, has been recommending that I throw my clothes in the dryer at the end of the day because heat kills ticks. As with other exciting health news of our time in which the COVID-19 transmission is being reduced through vaccination of people who could carry it, the folks at Cary Institute are studying ways to reduce the number of ticks infected with Lyme through treating the mice on which they live. You can find information about that at project.org. Maybe I'm right to focus on the little things when I'm up in the middle of the night. Viruses, bacteria, spittle, and ticks. It does seem like it's the little things that get you. Agriculture is underwritten by Chicana Farms, LLC, a small-scale producer of heritage-bred livestock and a wide array of vegetables and berries on just over 39 acres in Germantown, New York. More information, 518-537-3815.